In this week's Photoshop design tutorial, we're going to look at another vintage logo design, a series two out of five. So hey guys, welcome back to a brand new Photoshop design tutorial. My name is Manny and in this tut I want to teach you guys again another simple vintage logo design in Photoshop. It's a little bit of a series. Last week we had the same effect and same design, same design methods, but just different designs. So yeah, let's get right away into this. Okay, so obviously you can see there's a bit of different fonts. There's some other shapes that we're using and a different background. Again, you guys can find all of these PSDs in the Tronics Design Media Library. Just have a look down below. It's a link it's 4.99 a month and you get everything that i've created for the last past three years and yeah you get all my files all everything just not the fonts guys these i have linked down below in the description so you can find them on the web most of them are for free and you can use them commercially even some of them for your designs so yeah let's get right away into this i'm going to start again out with a new canvas size and a new layer new canvas actually so i'm going to go to file new and over here I have again saved some stuff. So obviously like last week, YouTube 1920 for 1080. This is my YouTube size for designing this stuff for the tutorials. But again, if you have a different canvas size, go at it and change it. Also, if you're new to this and have no idea what's going on, have a look on the channel as another tutorial teaching you how to set up canvas sizes. Or alternatively, just copy paste what I have here on the right hand side. Okay, I'm gonna hit create. And first step I'm going to do now is double click here onto the background. I just want to unlock this and also invert it. So I'm going to press Command I. Again, I'm working on a Mac. If you're a Windows user, please press Control when I say Command. So for Windows currently, it's Control I. For Mac, Command I. Okay, we have a black background layer. I'm just going to rename this to black. And the reason for that is also I want my logo to stand out quite a lot. If I have this on a white background, it will look completely different. So I want a black background there. Okay, let's go back to this and first layer set, it's our black background. Now I'm going to take an image and move that in and just drop it and scale it a bit. So basically from the desktop, just drag it in, hold shift on the keyboard, select one of these anchor points here and you can obviously scale this and downscale this however you like. I'm going to upscale it a little bit, hit enter and just press move tool here, it's also V on the keyboard. And then I'm just going to move it with my cursor slightly into the middle. So I have all my edges completed there. Great. Now, next step I want to do is make this almost like 30 to 36% opacity, maybe even 40. Always depends on your design, whatever you like. I'm going to go with 36. Okay, select both of these layers. Press Command G and put that also together in a group and call this my background for now. Obviously you can be more creative if you guys like, you can always go on open, select image, and on top of that go to adjustments and select maybe hue and saturation or selective color and tweak still the colors if you like, make it black and white, whatever you desire, you can still add effects on top of that. I'm gonna quickly show one effect here. I'm just gonna move say the grayscale, just the nutrients, I'm just gonna, the neutrals, I'm just gonna move this like crazy over so you can see the effect that you're getting. So if you're looking for different colors, you can still do that over here also with the selective color adjustment layers. Guys, if you don't have this adjustment here, just go to window and select adjustments and it will pop up in your workspace. Okay, let's go further with our background. Next step would be, I wanna add some guidelines. So I'm gonna go to view, New guides, I'm going to say here 50% and hit enter. So I've got a nice guide in the center. View again, I'm going to go a new guide and say vertically also 50% so I get really my center position. So I hope that my design is then always nice in the middle of the vintage logo design. Let's press T on the keyboard and we're going to get into the text tool. Now I'm going to make a nice big selection and first of all going to write the name over here. So this is again a, obviously a very random name. You can choose whatever you have. I'm going to go with Ovambo Land. Okay. And the font is already the correct one. Let's also talk about that. So I'm going to select everything, just highlight it. First of all, I want a white foreground color here. Okay. And then also I've chosen here Pacifico. That one you can also find in the description down below. It is not added in the Tronics Design Media Package. No fonts are in there because I do not have the rights to sell these to you. 
So you can find these on the web. I've linked it down below in the description so you can find them. Most of them are for free. Just have a double check that you can also use them for commercial rights if you do use your logos there. Then it's going to be regular. The font size, I want it to be almost 45. And let's have a look at the tracking. Where is the tracking? Here, character box tracking zero at the moment. If you also don't have the character box, just go back to window and select character. Okay, I'm happy with that, accept it. Take the move tool, I'll actually just move it down. This is also just to get a position, right? Roughly, we'll obviously space that in a bit. Then let's go and create the next text, uh, whole new text box. It's just again the text tool. And in here, let's write South Africa. So maybe this adventurous thing is happening in South Africa. Okay, select all of it and make my whole layers a bit smaller here. Spelling mistake in there, Africa. Okay, I'm going to select a new font now. That would be Monstrat. Where is that now? Mot Serat Bold. That is the one I'm looking for. Okay, great. Then size could be about 10 to 8. Let's make it like 8 for now. And tracking 500. That would be amazing because then it's nice and wide. Yep, I like that. Okay, accept it. And also with the move tool, let's just place it for currently here in the center also. You can always use the cursors left and right to move that thing. Okay, happy with that. Now we're going to go into the next step. And that is, first of all, going to try to make a round path. And then on the path, we're going to type. So let's take again another guideline here, but this time manually from our rulers here from the top. So you can literally just click onto the ruler and drag it down. But if you don't have the rulers, you need to first switch them on. So you can press that or do it via a shortcut. You can just press Command and R. Then they disappear like now or pop up again. Again, Windows is just Control R. So I'm going to click on here and just literally drag down a guideline. Like somewhere over here, I want to make it nice and round. And great. I'm going to take another guideline over here and another one towards the end of my text. Okay. And you guys can see that is not completely the middle here. It looks like it's a bit wider, a bit over. But like I'm doing this quickly for the tutorial. Take a bit more time when you space your guidelines so it's perfectly in the center. I'm going to take the pen tool, put an anchor point over here. And another anchor point, but keep on holding and just move your mouse down. And I'm just trying to get here a very even curve with the pen tool. Great. Like so, I like that. Okay, text tool again, select T. And just on top of that, I'm just going to click so I can type on top of that. Okay, click there. And now I'm going to write adventure. Adventure, there we go. Select all of it again. And this time we're going to select a new font. Uh, it's my favorite font, Big Noodle. Or Big Noodle titling regular. That's the font that we're going to choose. It's going to be about 25 size. Yeah, nice and big. And tracking, not 500. Maybe around 200, so it's not that crazy. Okay, we've got that all in place. Also white foreground color. And now what we're going to do is accept it. Actually, before we do that, we should in front just hit a few times space bar so that adventure comes and moves a little bit into the center here of our text. Next step, I'm going to go to view and say just clear the guide so everything is out. And I also want to hide my pen tool path here. So the easy way to do that is just press command, shift and H together. So Windows, control, shift and H, Mac, command, shift and H. So you're hiding just that line. Great. Select the move tool. And then adventure here, and we just move that slightly down. Great, happy with that. South Africa can still stay somewhere here. Okay, now we have all of that. I'm gonna select all of these layers, just hold Command, select all of them. Again, press Command G together. We have a new group, we're gonna rename that to text. And now I wanna add a new empty layer. Now, normally I would go to my shape library and find a ton of shapes that I can use, but this time I'm just going to create them from scratch. You guys can also have a look on other tutorials where I create similar vintage logo designs where I use a ton of the shape libraries, uh, objects, and yeah, also in the Tronics Design Media Package, I have, I think, over 400 different shapes. It's insane. It's so full. Anyways, <laughs> let's go on. I'm going to select here the marking tool. And first of all, do the round marking tool, just the elliptical marking tool. So hold shift on the keyboard 
So I'm just equally expanding here and just making a very small selection, a very small circle. Let me show you here, a very, very small one. I'm actually gonna do this again. Marking tool, elliptical one, hold shift, and just going to make a very small selection. Create, so I actually can create just a little dot. So on this new empty layer, I'm gonna go and right click inside of the selection and just say fill, and we can here actually say with foreground color because it's currently white, and I'm gonna hit okay and press Command D, get out of the selection, and voila, we have a little dot over here. Now, I'm gonna move this dot a little bit over, so it looks like it comes with that advantage. Uh, adventure. I'm gonna press Command J in order to duplicate this dot, and we're just gonna drag it all the way over here. Also nice, what's new with Photoshop, you have these uh, automated guidelines, these pink ones, so they help you, it's quite handy. Okay, let's put it there, great. Now, let's take another guideline down, just move it somewhere over here and we're going to go to the normal rectangular marking tool. Select that. First of all, what I want to do is do a little square. So I'll just hold shift and make a little box like so. Great, we have a little selection here. Let me zoom in a little bit closer for you guys. Okay, I'm going to create a new empty layer. You can also rename them if you like. I'm just going to select, uh, click inside of the selection again. Say fill. And foreground color, okay, it's selected white. Press Command D, and now we have a little white square there. So I actually want to turn that one. I'm just gonna press Command T and rotate it like so. Well, the easiest thing is just to hold Shift and it will clip right away to 45 degrees. Okay, hit Enter, move that a bit down, and right away we have our square in here. Then again, press Marking Tool or M on the keyboard and I'm just going to make a very small selection over here, like so. I'm actually going to make it a bit bigger so it's easier for me to work with it. Like so, just a little selection, a long stripe, and new layer again. Hit right click inside of the selection, fill, we do the same process, foreground color, okay. Press Command D, get out of the selection, and now I'm just with the cursor, basically your move tool, I'm moving this whole line around. Okay, so it looks quite thick to me. I'd like to zoom in and just cut a little bit off. Perhaps I will zoom out, just have a look and feel how it feels overall. Yeah, I'm gonna do actually go to view, clear the guides, go back in, and just delete a little bit of that. So let's make a small selection again with a marking tool, select M marking tool, and just move it a bit around and delete slightly a bit of that, obviously being on the right layer as well. Now, let's make this layer, we drag it down so it clips nicely with that new modern guidelines that you're getting there, the automated guidelines, okay? I like that. The last step I will do is just press Command J, duplicate that layer, and literally just move that over. Okay, it's also, ah, it's awesome. You can see how it automatically gives you the right sizes and the right spacing. Great, last step is now just positioning again. Let's take all of these layers, Okay, holding Command there, selecting all of it, pressing Command G, and put that again into another group. I'll just call the shape for now. And just go back into the text layer, take South Africa, and move that a little bit over. And now I'm basically spacing my whole design so it feels right for me. Also gonna take the shape layer, just move that up a bit. Just have to be in mind, these round shapes here will move up a bit. So just selecting both of them again. Move that down, like so. Okay, and then lastly, take the big Ovumberland word and we just take that slightly down. Great, so that's basically it. Super easy, super simple, and very quick as well. Lastly, take shape and text, and you can still space that into the middle if you like, but I'm happy overall with this. Yeah, guys, that's basically it again for this week's tutorial. Super easy, two out of five from the whole series. We're gonna have a few more of these designs in the next two weeks. So yeah, have a look if you're interested in th this type of design stuff or if you like, there's more on the channel. Thanks again, guys, for watching. Don't forget to check out the Tronics Design Media Package and all everything that is linked down below in the description. And yeah, I look forward to hearing your feedback, what you think about these new tutorials. Do let me know and thanks again for watching guys. I'll see you all in the next one. See ya!